Fancy homes, private jets, condos overlooking the strip, I've had it all. But you know what one thing I haven't had is? I haven't built a billion dollar company yet. And I'm gonna share with you how to build one and the mistake that stopped me from building one yet. Most of my friends are entrepreneurs. Similar to me, they've done well. And when you look at me, you think, oh, successful guy, nice home, he has money, he dresses decent. But you know what? Compared to my friends, I'm really, really poor. I have a lot of friends whose salary, not business revenue, but their salary is in the hundreds of millions of dollars a year. I have friends on the Fortune 1000 list and people are worth five, 10. Actually, I don't know anyone above 10, but I know quite a few people between five and $10 billion. That's a lot of money right people think millions of dollars is a lot of money no billions of dollars is a lot of money i've seen some of my friends walk in a vegas casino and people are really sad and they're like here's 50 grand but you know what them giving 50 grand to people is like me giving a dollar to someone that's how rich they are when they're worth five or ten billion dollars on the Forbes or Fortune 1000 list. So here's the thing that you need to do if you want to build a billion dollar business. It's not about how hard you're working or how smart people you have on your team because you know what to create a million dollar business or a multi-million dollar business you need that as well. But the difference between creating a business that does hundreds of millions versus billions of dollars is you need a business that solves a problem for a really big market cap. One of my first businesses is called Crazy Egg. A lot of businesses are using it. We have hundreds and thousands of companies that are using Crazy Egg each and every single month. And what it does is it helps you optimize your website so that way more of your visitors convert into customers. And that's a decent pain that a lot of people are experiencing. But here's a problem and here's why Crazy Egg will never be a billion dollar business. It doesn't solve a big enough problem. Now think about Uber on the other hand. They're solving transportation problems. They're making it more efficient for you to get to one place to another and spending less money doing that. And best of all, you don't even have to drive. You can be a poor person and now you can have a driver just like those rich people have. Uber is solving a huge problem. It was such a big problem that they increased the market size of the whole taxi industry. That's right, before Uber, the taxi industry was actually smaller. They didn't just take a portion of the taxi industry, they grew it and make it way bigger. So if you don't solve a big problem and go after a huge market, you're not gonna create a billion dollar business. Now, whatever idea you have, you have somewhat competitors. It may not be direct competitors, like Uber's not directly competing with taxis. A lot of people aren't like, should I take a taxi or Uber? It's more so they're like, oh, I need to go to a place. I'd rather have an Uber versus having my own car. Like me, I don't even drive, right? But when I'm in New York, it's easier to grab a cab than it is to grab Uber in most cases. But if you're not going after a really big market, you won't do well. And a lot of people, and you may be thinking, hey, if I want to create a billion dollar business, I want to create this new category, but no, stop. Sure, you can innovate in a sector, but go after something that's a really big TAM. If you're not familiar with what TAM, T-A-M stands for, TAM is total addressable market size. So if you go after something big like a Salesforce's market size with the CRM market, and let's say they're worth 50 billion, will you be bigger than Salesforce? If you dream it, maybe it'll happen, but chances are you're not. But that's okay. If you're, you know, 5% of Salesforce, you're still a billion dollar company. So if you go after something that's really huge, like the advertising space or the CRM space or support, or if you go after transportation or automation or trucking or shipping containers, how boring that may sound, like companies like Docker, Docker, or whatever they are, they're huge. It's because they're going after something that's totally big. And if you go after a really huge market size, even if you take 1% of it you can do well I was at a conference the other day speaking in Arizona and a company was holding it it was called Nextcon and it was held by this company called Nextiva which offers voice over IP phone services and they're already doing over a hundred million dollars in revenue and you know what the founder told me he's like Neil it's crazy the voice over IP market, you know, like those Vonage commercials, the woohoo, woohoo, woo and you pick up the phone and you can call over the internet, those guys, that market has only 8% penetration. That means 92% of the people out there are still using landlines. 
That's a small market penetration. But that means five, 10 years from now, it can grow to even be bigger and bigger. Yet yeah, Nextiva is doing over $100 million and they're not even the biggest player in the space. There's companies like Ring Central and Vonage that are already worth a billion plus. But as you can see, you probably haven't heard of Nextiva, yet they're still making hundreds of millions of dollars. So if you go after a huge market, you have a much better shot of creating a billion dollar business. And that's why you see me creating multiple products in the marketing space. It's not that I want four or five different companies. It's because I can combine them all and I eventually will and I can have a business that's going after a really big TAM, total addressable market. And if you go after a big market, what does that mean? You can have a big company. So if you're not sure if your idea is gonna be big enough where you can hit that billion dollar mark, leave a comment and I'll respond and I'll tell you if it's a big enough idea. And if you're unsure and you need help, go to Google Finance. You can see other publicly traded companies in their financials. That'll help you determine if idea is a good idea. You can just type in a stock quote like Apple, A-A-P-L, and it'll reveal their stock price and market cap. The other thing you can do is go look at Google Trends and type in keywords related to your space and it'll show you how many people are searching for stuff related to your space, like the word computers. So once you have that chart and if it's huge, you're doing a good job. If it's small, you're doing a bad job. And compare it when you're using Google Trends to the term digital marketing. It has to be at least 10 times bigger than the word digital marketing. And again, if you're unsure, leave a comment. I'm here to help you out. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll speak to you in my next video.